Good morning, everybody. As most of you know, today is Thursday, January 21st, and yesterday was a very big day for not only our country, but the entire world. Right, and you're here with Ty, or I, and Bennett, and for more of that, let's take it over to Olivia. In his final few hours in the White House, former President Trump signed a batch of 73 pardons and 70 commutations. These include a few high-profile names such as Steve Bannon, rapper Lil Wayne, and another rapper, Kodak Black. He also granted clemency to 31 people of nonviolent drug offenses. The following morning, he held a small rally where he spoke to his audience. To tell you that from the bottom of my heart, this has been an incredible four years. Uh, we've accomplished so much together. I want to thank all of my family and my friends and my staff and so many other people for being here. I want to thank uh, you for your effort, your hard work. Yesterday, President Joe Biden and SU alumni signed 17 executive orders, memorandums, and proclamations to reverse specific policies made by former President Donald Trump. In Mr. Biden's remarks, he stressed unity of purpose, urging Americans to join together as neighbors and ease the tension. However, his first actions in office, only hours after his inauguration, seemed to be more about erasing much of Trump's agenda than compromise. All of his actions fell into four categories his aides had described as the converging crisis. The, pa the pandemic, economic struggles, immigration and diversity issues, and climate change. Among the actions taken by the president were orders to rejoin the Paris climate change, the end of um, Trump's travel ban on Muslim and African countries, and more immediately, an 100 masking challenge where he urged Americans to wear masks and officials to implement public measures to prevent the spread of COVID. Additionally, he signed an order mandating masks be worn on all federal property and by all federal employees. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Did you miss an episode of Spartan News and want to stay connected? connected? Make sure you check us out at www.esmschools.org slash SN. So as most of you know, I know a lot of people saw the inauguration yesterday, and we had a lot of very important people come to that inauguration. One of those was the youngest poet to ever speak at a presidential inauguration, Amanda Gorman. Right, and then we had a, a wonderful performance from Lady Gaga. She sung the national anthem. And of course, the one and only J-Lo. She did very, very well in my Yeah, day. yeah, she did. Last night in the NBA, uh, Colin Sexton and the Cleveland Cavaliers spoiled their debut of the Brooklyn Big Three as they won 147 to 135 in double overtime. Colin Sexton had a career high last night in 42 points. Durant, Irving, and Harden combined for 96 points in the loss. On Tuesday night, the Dome had a double header as the women's basketball team beat North Carolina 88 to 76. And that night, the men snapped a two-game losing streak as they beat Miami 83-70, to 70. no, 35. And on Tuesday, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays and the 
and the former M World Series MVP George Springer signed a six-year, $150 million contract. And I'm Tanner with your sports. And a very uh, special and, and important uh, person who played a big role that happened on January 6th, I'm pretty sure he uh, led a mob of people away from the Senate. And he, his name is Eugene Goodman. And he was, uh, he got a, he was able to walk uh, the president and Dr. Biden out during the inauguration. And at the end of the inauguration, we had a beautiful fireworks show. I didn't personally get to see it, but as you can see from these pictures, it was very bright and pretty. I like that nice pink color. So from Ty, myself, and everyone here at the morning show, have a great day.